now that you've seen a few of the things that it can do, we can go ahead and get talking about it. I don't know about you, but I hate reviews that sit there and just blah, blah, blah. Here's the manual, I'm gonna read it. I'd rather show you up front, this is how it works, what it's gonna do, what it can do, and then if you're interested, keep watching the video. Let's get started. Our last test was done with an 1100 watt Sunbeam microwave, all being ran off the Opus 1200 watt portable power station. And did I mention that it's portable? It only weighs 24.3 pounds. So if you're looking for something that's portable that you can use for camping, fishing, emergency backup, something to get you through until you can get your big generator out, whatever the case might be, then this is the product I'd like to show you. What you just witnessed in the beginning is the Opus 1200 watt portable power station. It was able to power some of the most extreme power hungry tools on my truck. I showed a vacuum pump, which was a half horse motor. I showed a DC drive vacuum pump, an 1100 watt microwave, a 15 amp circular saw, and several small things such as battery chargers. And I'll give you full disclosure here that this was provided to me by Opus. No money in exchange, just the tool itself to do the review on, mine to keep. So what do I think of this so far? Well, what you've seen so far is it can power some rather large tools. How long they can power is dependent on how many watts it's pulling. As you can see, the vacuum pump on average is pulling somewhere between 400 and 500 watts. And this device here is capable of doing 992 watt hours. So if you had a 500 watt appliance pulling the same wattage the whole time, you're gonna get just under two hours out of it. On the very front display, you can actually see how many hours it has. And the top right corner is the output watts. And then in the middle is the battery power overall. Now, this particular model, like I said, is 1200 watts. Now, Opus does offer four convenient portable power stations, a 600 watt, this 1200 watt, an 1800 watt, and a 2400 watt version. What we're gonna to do today is the 1200 watt version. I do not have the solar panels to show you, but it is able to be recharged by the solar panels. It does come with a 200 watt power brick here, which plugs into a standard 110, 120 volt outlet. It charges right around 186 watts, and it takes right around seven and a half hours. It also comes with a car plug, so you can plug it in, and same thing here, it's gonna read on the display exactly how fast it's charging. And as I was mentioning, they do have 100 watt portable solar panels that you can also purchase separately or in a kit, depending on which one you wanna buy. I will have a link down in the bottom description to each one of the different portable power stations, along with a discount code that you can save yourself 10%. This particular model right now can be had for right around $650 with all the discount codes that are going on right now. The average price is right around the $750 to $780 range. Let's go ahead and go over some of the features now that you've seen the things that it can power. This particular 1200 watt model does feature a LiPo 4 battery that has 992 watt hours. The device only weighs right around 24.2 pounds, so it's light enough that most people will be able to move it around. It has the power to power most devices. We should be able to power some speakers, so if you have a band and you're wanting to uh, do something remote and don't want a loud generator, this is gonna be the perfect solution for you. Now we do have a power switch down here at the bottom left corner, right at the bottom of the outlet. This turns the AC power section here on and off. The power station still is on currently. If you want to turn it off, you can just hold the button and it'll shut off in about two and a half, three seconds. That's the area that you're gonna to wanna to keep it at when you're not using it. Otherwise, when it's on, it will slowly discharge itself. So hold the button for a second for it to come on, let up, it gives you the battery life here. If you have anything that you wanna power in the DC section here, you gotta turn on the DC power switch down at the bottom. That powers up your two USB-A ports, which are QC 3.0. We have two USB-C ports here, one rated at 60 watts and one at 18 watts. Then directly above that, we have our 12 volt DC 5521 output ports rated to 10 amps. And then you have the 12 volt car adapter there. The car adapter would plug into your car just like you would anything else. It does have a light on top there, as you can see. And if you was to plug it into here, it would actually start to charge itself. Your input watts and output watts are pretty much just circulating back and forth. Output watts is 20, input watts 17. So you've got a loss of power going in and going out. And you can't generate voltage from the same power source. It just doesn't work that way. Otherwise you'd have infinite power. Now the 120 volt power brick here has a green light down here in the bottom corner. On the back side, it does tell us that it's capable of running 100 to 240 volts in at 50 or 60 hertz. And the input is right at three amps. The output is 24 volts at 8.33 amps. The wattage going out is supposed to be 99.92, but when we plug it in here, we're gonna see that it's not quite that high. It's very close. 
there is a little loss in efficiency, which we're gonna see anytime we have conversion processes going on. So right now we're charging in there at 185 watts. As it starts to charge, the little blue lights continues to go clockwise. So for demonstration purposes, we'll go ahead and plug this into the USB-C port and we'll go ahead and plug in our phone. It says it'll take one hour. It doesn't show a whole lot down here. We know our output wattage right now is seven watts. That's all that's being pulled by the phone currently. I do have fast charge turned on, but I don't have super fast turned on. And now if we switch it over here to the 60 watt, see what it says now. Still one hour, I have the fast charging turned off on my phone and it's only pulling seven watts. Now this is kind of just a generic cord. The power on this is only one way, so it can only power out to a device. It will not charge going back in. Now to give you an idea of how many phones you're gonna be able to charge, you're gonna be able to charge a 3100 milliamp hour battery on a phone about 65 times, a 30 watt tablet about 29 times, a 60 watt laptop about 15 times. So you've got a lot of power here in reserve that's gonna charge your small appliances uh, pretty quickly. This is made for just kind of small camping, you know, out and about, got small projects to do, things like that. Now, when you have the solar panels, that's gonna allow you to recharge during the day, use your appliances and small things at night. If you just need power in a small remote area for just say, for a short duration, it's gonna be perfect for that. A lot of people are using these, like I said, for camping, hunting, going on uh, off-road trips, using them for, you could use it at work, vacuum pump, whatever. I mean, it's definitely going to drain the battery down very quickly with something that pulls as much as 500 to 600 watts, but it's capable of doing it. The 12 volt here is capable of doing also 10 amps. In this section here, you got direct DC voltage straight from the battery to the appliance. Now granted, if this is charging at 24 volts, I'm gonna say that the batteries probably are running at a higher area and then being stepped down to the 12 volt area, that's uh, something to consider. You may have some loss there. This is able to be used as a UPS, so you can actually be charging something, running something while it's charging at the same time. So if you wanted to put this on your computer, your TV, say you're using recording equipment and you're in the middle of a recording, if the power goes out, it's gonna just continue to power it right off the battery and you're not gonna be interrupted. So it is capable of doing that. Now I have heard there's some devices out there when you run them completely dead, they go dead, you get them recharged, you have to turn them back on. So it's not foolproof far as that's concerned, but if you're gonna be around it, it is gonna be able to handle that situation. Let's go ahead and check our output voltage here to see where we're actually ranking in at. We've got to turn on the power section for the AC. As I mentioned earlier, right now we're at nothing. We hit the button, it turns on, you can hear the fan kick up in speed. And here is our 110.5 volts. We hit the frequency button, we're at 59.8 which is close enough to 60 hertz, not a big deal. I will mention that this does have a pure sine wave. A pure sine wave is gonna make sure your sensitive electronics are not damaged. This is capable of running 50 hertz, which you can switch it to that. If you're up in Canada and you run 50 hertz, you are able to switch that to it. It still puts out 110 volts. We can jump over here to the DC section and see what our output voltage is here. We can go to the plug that the car adapter is. We'll go ahead and hit for ground and we'll go for the positive and we're right at 12.7. And coming down to this jack here, we're right at 12.7. Same thing we'd go for this one right here, 12.7. Now we're gonna go ahead and flip this thing around here onto the back side. It does come with a convenient light here, which is very bright. That's the low, and there's high, and you have an SOS feature here. Just to kind of show you how bright this thing is. So right there it is with it off, on, and high, so it does light up the room rather well. It'll come in handy to get you to set things up. So if you're a campsite, you got there late, perfect, perfect thing, and it's very bright. They don't mention how long it lasts. I haven't tested that out yet, but say that it's probably LED lighting, obviously, and it's gonna last quite a long time. These LiPo 4 batteries are not just traditional lithium ion batteries. These are lithium phosphate. They last up to 2,500 cycles before they start to lose their capacity. Whereas a regular lithium ion battery is usually only good for 250 to 500 cycles before they start losing their capacity. This is gonna last you for quite a long time, for several years. It does come with a two year warranty. I've watched several other reviews on this and everyone that I've seen has said really good things about it. I've watched them use the oscilloscope on it to prove that it actually had the sine wave that was smooth, 
which I don't have an oscilloscope, so I'm not able to do that, but I did see it firsthand. I did watch them do the testing on load tests as far as the DC amperage and things like that. Several different people out there that's done that type of testing. My main thing I wanted to show is that it's capable of running large appliances. It's also obviously able to handle the small ones as well. It's kind of suited more for smaller appliances. It is able to run a coffee pot. It is able to run a toaster oven and small items like that as long as it stays under the 1200 watt mark. As I've seen this tested, it comes in about 1300 watts before it starts to shut down. This does have quite a bit of different protection in it. Now, as I did mention, this does give you 1200 watts continuous, but it also has a peak wattage of 3600 watts, which is quite a large inrush capabilities. So that's gonna get your inductive motors running, and that's how we were able to run that big circular saw like we did. It was rated at 15 amps. Once it gets running, the motor starts to coast, and your amperage drops down once it's going. Same thing with the vacuum pumps. It was cold, the oil was thick, and once it started to run, the amperage started to drop. Also, as I mentioned once before, this can be charged anywhere between 200 and 240 watts of solar generation. So if you've got a bright sunny day, you are able to get this recharged a lot quicker than even with the wall outlet. But obviously clouds are going to affect that. And the car charger on average charges at about 96 watts. So that's kind of what slows it down. So up to 12 hours to charge on the car. Now this does have BMS battery management system. It has over voltage protection, over current protection, over heat protection. It does adjust the charging voltage and the speed to suit the device's needs. It'll protect your device and keep it lasting it longer. They do have a 600 watt TV rated for right around two hours, an electric grill for up to 50 minutes, a coffee pot at 88 minutes, a blender at two hours, a mini fridge at 17 hours, a laptop eight charges, a CPAP machine at 17 hours, and a phone, as I mentioned earlier, up to like 80 charges. So this is gonna be great for the wife's CPAP machine. A lot of times I have to go out and get the generator out which takes time and effort to get that. And at nighttime, you really don't need that many things running. So I'm able to just grab this, plug our machine into it and go back to sleep. Otherwise, I gotta dig out a generator, get it running, worry about the fumes, worry about somebody stealing it in the middle of the night. This is so much more convenient and so much easier. If we're gonna use this in the home, this may not be the right size unit for the home. You might be better off to go with the 1800 to 2400 watt version which are able to charge faster with more solar cells. It might be something for you to consider, especially if you're way off the grid, there's no power lines where you're at anyhow, this might be the system to look at. On average, this is not going to run all the way up to the 992 watt hours because it has to protect the battery pack. You cannot completely, truly 100% discharge a lithium battery. It's going to save a reserve capacity anywhere from 10 to 20%, depending on how they have it programmed. So you're never gonna get that full 900, but what the calculations have came out to be is somewhere right around 82 to 85% efficient, meaning that you're gonna get 85% potentially out of that battery. Now I did have to go ahead and plug my GoPro camera in because it was starting to go dead. So right now with the USB-C plugged in, I'm only pulling four watts of power on this. So we're running the display right now, recording at 1080p. It's gonna give us a long, long time, potentially 41 hours of runtime with the battery currently at 88%. I've been kind of hard on this thing today. I was just basically hammering away at it. And so far, like I said, we're at 88%. Only ran them for about, you know, four minutes, five minutes area. Once the device usually starts running, it tends to stabilize rather quickly. So you can actually see how long it's going to run at whatever the load is. It usually takes anywhere from right around 30 seconds to maybe a minute for the device to figure out what the load is going to be and how long it's gonna actually last. It's gonna calculate immediately, but it's gonna give you a more accurate one as it runs for a longer duration. Now we'll go ahead and get a little bit better look here at the side of it. This is where the fan brings the air in and where the air goes out on the other side. Looking inside there, all the solder joints and everything looks pretty good. I really wanted to tear this apart and kind of look into it, but honestly, I really like it. I really don't want to void the warranty or cause it to not work. When you look at it on top, it actually has a nice smooth handle, fits nice in your hand. It has a rubber coating out here on the sides. On the bottom, they also have rubber feet. It does have four rubber feet with screws to help make sure that they don't come off. We can go ahead and plug in a toaster oven here, which this is gonna be a power hungry hog. It's definitely gonna pull a lot of power. So let's go ahead and kick this thing on, get our display up, go ahead and kick it on. You're gonna see how fast that's gonna drop it down. It's very heavy resistive load. We're pulling right at about 680 watt area. As you can see, it's starting to counter it and give you an exact run time there. And you gotta to remember too that our battery has depleted a little bit, so we're not gonna get true amount of hours 
based off of a full charge, but at least at the current state that we're in. Barely hear the motor running there on the side, keeping itself cool. The fan just kicked on, you can kind of hear it. Now the next device we've got here is a new wave air fryer. This is a little bit bigger than what this device probably can handle. And right there is 1800 watts. So we can actually go ahead and just go 900 watts. So we are able to at least be able to heat up our food and set it at the temperature we want, which usually is about 400. Go ahead and turn on the light. Go ahead and hit start and see what she pulls in there. Let's go ahead and hit our display here. See what it comes in at. If it's right around that 900 mark that they're saying. We're about 987 watts area. So it is able to run. That's kind of nice because I mean, you're gonna be potentially out camping, what have you. You gotta have some way to heat your food up. So this obviously is not really roughing it when you have yourself an air fryer, but hey, it is able to run it. You can see that we're starting to deplenish the battery pretty quickly. We're about 58 minutes at this kind of a load. Now well, 48 minutes. Like I said, it needs about a minute or so to start to stabilize out. Just to prove that we are running that off of the power pack, I'm gonna go ahead and unplug it. Oh, there we just stepped up to high fan. We're gonna go ahead and unplug that and this is going to shut everything down. Just to make sure that you know that I'm not pulling your leg. It's going ahead and dropping down there. Like I said, that display does like to shut off there within, you know, 20 to 30 seconds area. I don't know why. That's probably one of the things I don't like about it is just the display constantly turns off. That's probably my only major complaint that I've got out of it. Otherwise, it seems to be doing really well. I'm pretty impressed. I did not expect this thing to do as well as it's doing. I have personally a 3000 watt portable inverter generator, and I also have a 8000 watt larger generator. The biggest problem out of them is they're very loud and heavy. It's very difficult for a lot of people to get them started and get them ready to go. So with something like this, this is going to get you by until you can get your power back on. It's something to check out, guys. Like I said, check it out down in the description down below. I'll have links to it. And until next time, we'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching. You wouldn't think I was going to let you get out of it that easy, did you? Let's go ahead and test it out here at 1500 watts. Let's make sure to see if this thing will protect itself. So let's go ahead and hit go and start. So 1300 watts so we're actually at 1300 watts we're about 100 over 111 over what it's rated at it's actually continually going you see the little fan there just spinning and spinning this is actually underrated by a little bit so they definitely did a good job in designing it they didn't cheat the specs from what i see like i said it's definitely worth checking out if you need bigger get the next size up there's definitely two or more to check out So it is still running it at 1300 watts. Fan just kicked up to high speed. All right, it ran it for that long duration of time right there and it did air out. It did give you the red arrow there. So it did uh, shut down and protect itself. It did kill power to the heater. Now to reset it, we're gonna turn off the power there. That turned it off. Okay, power's back on, there's the AC. It just turned it back on, so we're good to go.